Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solario. Okay, it is 5.35. Uh, we will now start our work session at this time. And we'll proceed with um, an update properly from... Uh, You've been on vacation too long. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> and with technology as far as the the purchases of the... the yes, the one-on-one. -on -one okay. The, uh, and the... Uh, what's the other thing we have? We have three things. We have the iPad, the, right. the I'm sorry, not the iPads, the devices, the one-to-one -one with the Chromebooks, um, and then we have the new, the broadcast news studio, and then we have the CoachCom, which is the speaker system. Okay. Um, the one-on-one. Okay, the one-to-one. On, one -one, and Mr. Watkins is here if we have questions. One of the questions that we had looked at was the difference in the device. And the difference in the device that we are requesting here is um, it's the one that the middle school students have is actually touch screen. You can flip it and it's a tablet and it's a Chromebook. So the idea is to bump those devices down. They were a success with our pilot, the 6th through 8th. They did great with them. But we bumped those down to the 3rd through 5th grade so that, because the, if you look at our kids that are going to come up, they will be using iPads. So they'll be used because of their tactile touch. So when you bump up to 3rd through 5th, we'll add in the keyboard, plus they'll have that touch. And then 6th through 12th, they will end up with the Chromebook, and the only difference is they can't slide and touch, they just type. It doesn't turn into the tablet. Uh, and the difference being the price, of course. So that lowers our price. As far as what the device does, you just can't have the touch screen ability. So if we, um, you know, if we had all the money in the world, we would recommend that for K through 12. I'm, I'm sorry, 3 through 12. But what we're suggesting is to bump those down that we have at the middle school and then so 6 through 12 would have the the other Chromebook that just doesn't have that and then you look at the options we put on there leasing of course um, the good thing about the lease is what most systems are doing with the one-to-one -one, with that three-year lease it rolls in to yes sir and it and cor correct me if I'm wrong it is three years right because you basically roll in and continue on with the um, with whatever the newest is because the technology changes so quickly because you just look at where the world is today and that's what kids are going to be using. It may be something different even, but you pick that up in that three year span <coughs> when that three years rolls in. Is that correct? There's, there's two lease options. There's a fair purchase option and there's a buyout option. The fair market value option actually is less money over three years than if we just bought them today. You save a lot more money if you lease it over three years because that's a guarantee that they buy back the devices at the end of three years at a certain price. So that gets knocked off. So the first year it would be the 187 lease and with that plus the one time additional cost of 90. For the carts and the bags. Right. right. Yes. Right. Okay. And the carts are called the third grade, they're not going home. At that age we're just trying to mentor everything so they still have to have a cart for charging and security. 
So we were purchasing the car so that they could stay at school. Same thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but our iPads <coughs> for K2. Those, uh, yeah. Yes, they need to stay locked in those cars in the classrooms. What was the uh, rating for the N23? I know that uh, Yoga had a four when y'all rated them back in November. The I full, um, what, how did y'all rate the N23? The N23, came, it was at grades three through five, rated a, this is out of 40, and a 35, middle school rated at 33, and a 33 at the high school. So it was actually the third. You had the, the Mac, which you know, this was number one, uh, coming in with a touchscreen Chromebook number two, and then this the N23 came in at third. And the reason was really the math department liked having the touch screen aspect so that they can use styluses and markup worksheets and things like that. But with the N23, you don't have that ability. You have to kind of use your mouse to do the markups. So that was the reason it actually got knocked down. But price point, you're looking at about $180 for an N23, which that's what the N22 was, but now it's called the N23. And around $420 for the yoga. And the yoga is the ones that our middle school kids had. Yes. So it was actually not a, a difference then with the lease or the purchase in terms of the amount of money. The fair market market value will save us money at the end because if we can buy it, it's going to cost us forget the number, but roughly about $30,000 more to buy it because they don't guarantee they'll buy it back from us. So at the end of, if we buy it, we own it for the next five, 10, however many years we can make it last. But with a lease, you're always on a constant rotation. So you actually save money with fair market value if you're looking at it by year. But you're also looking at it at the new technology aspect of the continuing advancements. We don't want to be locked in with old technology in three years from now. Right. Right. Because everything it is, it changes. You know how fast it changes. So, you know, we can buy a $170 device, and if we can have that last three to five years, that's amazing. That's, that's a heck of an investment for $170 for it to last for a kid that long. So, really, in three years, a Chromebook's lifespan, they're saying three to four years, that's all you're going to get out of a Chromebook before it's really just need to be replaced. So, uh, okay, let's explain to me where are we in terms of, if we did not pursue this right now, in terms of our student and what they have already. Explain to me where we are at this moment. Right now, our right high, now versus the doing Yeah, that. our six through eight had the, the pilot, so they had the yogas. Um, so we have enough for our middle school. We took that. We took all those back up. Um, so our goal was to move those down. But and then our high school, we have iPads. All those 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 are not a, those don't do what we need them to do at the high school level to teach um, and to prepare them for college and career. So those are regardless. Our goal is to ship those down to K two, and so you're looking at three five and nine twelve having nothing. They have no devices if we don't do it if we don't do this and and this is due to not having a systematic plan we needed a when you go in and buy that first set of devices and pilot which y'all did with 912 um i think y'all had done that right before i got here um your goal is to have a three-year plan of here's how we're going to roll them in if this is successful then we're we'll go down to six eight or three five or k2 but we didn't have that and so that's why we are where we are. So we wanted to try the Chromebooks in six through eight. It worked with the learning management system. But anytime you start a one-to-one -one initiative, you really need a K-12 plan. And so that we know how to roll things in, we could just pick up and keep going to add them in. Um, and that's what we've kind of developed now. But so right now, with, if we do nothing, we have no devices in three, five, or nine, twelve. So the devices that we we're in year we're going into year three with iPads. Yes, sir. We'll make our obsolete. last payment this fiscal year, so we don't have that starting in October. But they're so. obsolete already. For what they well, were. Well, at least for uh, the uh, at least for the high school. school before we bought I mean, them high school. Bumping right. them down to the uh, K2. K2. Right. K2 is yeah. where they need to go. With right. Tactile. How kids learn the 
A lot of our project lead the way under launch, which is our K-5 version. A lot of our teachers have um, enjoyed learning that. And so they have tons of apps that are built just for iPads with the K-5. So they'll have all have classroom sets of iPads, which is kind of where they where they go. Most systems that use iPads now for one-to-one, -one, they're in that K-2 or K-3. So It's not that we necessarily did it wrong. No. I mean, we had to have a starting point. Absolutely. Uh, but we've transitioned and we've learned mm -hmm. and we now see where the path needs to go. Yes, absolutely. And you have, just like with these Chromebooks, we didn't start and say, let's buy them K-8. You know, we started 6-8 as the second phase. And so now that it was successful, and many systems, you know, we've seen many systems transition over to Chromebook 2. We now have a plan that says, here's how we make it happen K-12, and we continue it. When you say continue it, what happens at the end of a three-year period? Then this lease, we, we redo it with new devices. So you basically budget for about $188,000. Each year. Each year. For, for 1,200 devices, all right? Yes, you keep your iPads K2. They pretty much stay okay, K2. Okay, so they would stay there. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And so, those don't. Those never go home, ever. So we've got 580 devices right now that are the Chromebooks Yoga. We need another 1,291 devices. So we need 1,800 devices that are on a rolling plan. Correct. And that's going to be 186,000, or is that going to be 330,000? Of three, three hundred thirty thousand on an annual basis per year, and where are we paying for these right now, at Angie? Out of the capital projects fund, the iPads. Of the iPads, mm -hmm. yes, capital projects. iPads, because yes. iPads, we're gonna pay in for that one. We still got one more payment. The last two years, we paid for the iPads out of where? capital projects. Correct. Capital projects. Okay. Yes. And it'll come. It was budgeted in this fiscal year to come out of capital projects. Sure. In August, I think you said so. So we're looking at a three hundred thirty thousand dollar year. It marked already for that, and we get eight hundred thousand a year in capital projects, roughly. Next year, correct. Right. But now next year, our budget has come. I mean, we just received it a week or so ago at one million, okay. which is more than we let's typically we get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, let's see if we can Could spend. You can, oh, uh, I, I think um, Dr. Davis can. Yeah, just certain things you can tell us in an email. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the what are our liabilities on the uh, multi-purpose facility bond issue and the QSAL bond issue? Now, How much is that? Is it earmarked year to year to year? Uh, the most expensive year was FY17 that we have, and it was two hundred forty-eight thousand. Next year will be two four um, two forty-two five sixteen. And um, then it stays right around the two hundred forty thousand mark okay. to come from capital projects. QSAP, how much is that per year? Now that is not complete yet. Um, you guys passed that resolution, but we're still working right now. I'm working in the background trying to get taxes pledged and um, the match, um, which is tended to to be a, a little more time consuming and difficult. But um, if we get that match, it'll be a hundred thousand per year for that. To do the full million. So roughly a third of our capital projects funds is not available to us. Right. Okay. Have we ever been in that position more than that? No, we've never had the we've never had debt service payment right. before. On that capital projects. Well, yeah. So I mean you got me for on average a million, yes, but on the average we're eight hundred. Yeah, right. So so it cost a million just for the year, this year, right? That's, that's right. Correct. So you're at 800 on average, and you've got yeah. 240 and 330. That's going to put you on up there at 550. Mm -hmm. So that's going to leave you 250 a year for capital projects. I don't recommend using capital projects money for technology devices. But, sure. You know, we've talked about that. That well, maybe how we need to restructure it. Yeah, it, it yeah. really does. It's, it's um, it it strains you, you know, with capital with what you need to do to your buildings. Why wouldn't that be out of instructional with it we should be. Our textbook in, money? In today's world, it should be. Probably 10, 15 years ago, it wouldn't have been, but in today's world, How it much is. do we normally budget or allocate for textbooks a year? 
Depends on what the state gives us. Now, textbooks, it's based on what the state gives us and what the adoption year is and if we're going to purchase physical textbooks. Can Here, we use them for technology? Not for devices, but where we can use them is for software that we've been, where we might have paid for, for example, Classworks. We mm -hmm. can pay for that renewal with textbook funds, which frees up the instructional budget. You know, we budgeted about $150,000. Our books were going to be class-based, right? Yes, so we won't need software of that sort. Well, the software that we're purchasing is all cloud-based. Yes. Okay. okay. We, so we, we just still, still have a proprietary. Yes. Sir. Okay. Ingenuity, what we it's another one that we use for credit recovery, that kind of thing, that kind of stuff. Textbook funds can now be used for that, and years ago it couldn't. So that <coughs> can free up some of our local, you know, money that we recommend that we use for instruction. That's. It's where most people will do that with their instructional budget. Of course, it's local funds. You know, it ends up being local funds, but you use your state textbook funds for those software purchases that you used to pay for. So that that's how you kind of change it. Mm -hmm. What we're while we're talking about capital projects, I think I sent you an email. This question about the 1.5 million dollars in unreserved fund balance on our 531 financial statement yeah I've, I've given I've calculated a more updated one the capital project is actually going to be on the back side here page two mm -hmm. and when you're looking at the 1.9 I'm about to give all the one right. then I've got it broken down to to the three capital projects and what you're truly looking at within that fund and then to the right there would be our uh, where we estimate at <coughs> what you what you have in your board packet is may and you know we for a whole month mm -hmm. from that so i updated it so the bottom line is that we've got some other expenses coming up obviously that we're not foreseen um, that you don't see in may correct right um, so this takes into account, account all of that. Billy Lawrence Chevrolet is your home for great deals and real savings on both new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Right now, choose their great selection of GM certified vehicles that come with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And their service department has trained technicians that can service and repair your vehicle. Hurry into Billy Lawrence Chevrolet on Highway 431 South. Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solerio. Uh, it's so I've got a cash balance. We we anticipate our capital so projects we're at minimum. Wow. So I'm looking at our just yeah. our capital projects piece to be three hundred and fifteen thousand at the end of the year. That now that balance. does not count that nine hundred and twenty two thousand. You see that right there to the right as well. Um, <laughs> what makes up that one point nine is your fleet which is for buses, right. um, capital projects, which is what we're, we've been spending out of, 315000 The general that we've had, that 922 that can go towards paying back on the QZAB or whatever we work up tonight, 
and then there won't be any more bond funds at the end of the year. And then I made those notes on the potential QZAB being that million dollars and paying back a hundred thousand. So let me get to where I want to look at. Hold on. So I know we're back one month because I'm looking at a balance sheet, which I didn't see here. I've got two million seventy-eight thousand dollars in cash and capital projects fund on May thirty-first. Nine hundred and twenty-two thousand is what we can spend. That's not pretty much encumbered. Correct. Okay, that's what I want to know. And that's but we got what half, we got but, more than half of that. Did you? But all uh, this already. Well, we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean but, but I'm just trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. yeah. We say that one time. About the Gen Four. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be done. So that's that's five hundred grand. Six. Oh, yeah. We're Six. Still it's got to happen. Yeah. Did you hear from the Atlanta guy today? There he's coming yeah, down Thursday. All right. So I'm, I'm going to have one of them make this guy's meeting. Okay. Good. We're going to be gone. Then we got another hundred thousand at the elementary school. Two twenty-two. Ninety something. Mm -hmm. So now we're down to two twenty-two. What's the elementary school? The uh, drainage the drainage. Drainage. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's part. That goes mm -hmm. with the. The road. So yeah. Yeah. I thought we were still I mean, talking. So we've, to had, him. we've had roughly seven hundred thousand dollars in unexpected expenses. Mm -hmm. Possibly that have to be done. Correct. So we're planning on that. In all likelihood, those two expenses are going to come from our unencumbered portion of our capital projects cash, the nine twenty-two, and or portions of the FY eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're up three hundred thousand on the FY. Don't know that how flow, much. Like that drainage issue. Because we're not getting anything from. It. Either one of those projects from the insurance of it. So we got we got them. We don't have any insurance. Well, no payment. It was, no, they they're not giving us cover that. They're saying it's water damage or something. Yeah, they said it's flood and water. So right. It, 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 it wasn't over. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what Bailey and I, he had already worked on the FY18 budget, so we had calculated that to come out of next year's capital projects fund. Which one of them? The 98,000. The road. So that's yeah, did you, you prepare one of those for us? This is the FY18 budget, what we're looking at. The capital projects. Yes. Just that 2120 capital projects. This does not have your 900,000 in it. And that was part of what the what they put additional funding in, the legislature did, because the, the trust fund, the ETF, was up again. So that's why we see more money in capital projects. So we've got a million fifteen thousand mm -hmm. budgeted all right. for next year. Real broad. <laughs> Just to make cause all these numbers, I'm not going. Yeah. Ooh. How much are we paying for Chromebooks and stuff out of there? This does not have the Chromebooks. Okay, that's fine. Paying debt out of there. The two hundred and forty-two. Yes. Plus the hundred. Plus the hundred. Does not have the hundred out of that. So, but I mean that's where it would come from, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's three forty-two. That's three forty-two. That's a third of it. Mm -hmm. And what's the seven hundred going to the rest of it? Just general maintenance. Yeah, um, classroom and office. From the yellow column is the budget. I'm sorry, and then to the right is the explanations. So okay. drainage so at EHS, right that roadway, painting, um, burnishers, gutters, road and back and painting. The that. high school. The high school. That's the elementary school. Which one that's is that? 253. 253. Because what we say is that's the drain, the road in the back, plus painting the in the classrooms inside. They're on. He's put all our schools back on rotation, so the hallways got it this year. So ideally, the rooms will get it next summer, just like we did at the primary. That's okay. what this. So yeah. what we're really learning is our capital projects cannot fund. The, the capital projects that need to be done on the infrastructure of the schools plus our technology. Correct. Okay. Yes. So how are we going to pay for technology then? The well, we're looking at you can look at probably two to two fifty, um, depending on what you want to do. I talked about re, we really need to renegotiate at some point this this contract with Alva because if you look at three percent and what our staff is having to do is is too much. Um, we're, we're, we're working way more than 3%. Well, we work with what we got right now. Well, and we have more than enough right now with 200 and we have 215,000 from the um, legislation that's mm -hmm. coming in. Um, 
could be that's, July. That's sure money. That is for say, sure money. But that hasn't been passed yet. No. So that was the only thing. So if we pay we don't for know something that it right now, we can't. September, maybe, maybe even into 18. Yes. Yes. Um, and I waited until I got to SSA to email y'all to see, is there any way that money could ever go away or be put somewhere else? And the answer was no, because um, at least Woodard and I talked about it before I even emailed y'all, because it's in the ETF. It it's basically was... One of the, the one of the politicians, from my understanding, was upset about the um, Accountability Act not getting approved, reapproved, and so stalled it for a while. And uh, Representative Poole's already on it. That the long story is, it could be July, like she said. They made an appointment to speak with Governor Ivy. It could be September. It could be, you know, FY18. So that's 215, and um, that is that's what we had allocated to use, and we want to allocate to use for these devices plus the money that we have um, from the current unit that is already, we already have 750000 sitting there and waiting to be, you know, earmarketed. I have the email from Ms. Gadotti today, because we, um, when you pass that through, just talking about their assurance that the split would be 3070. We get the other, the other half of it in September. On the Alva? Yes, sir. Okay. On the Alva, let's let's touch base on yeah, that. I thought we had because we, we had, had yeah we had we, pre we preferred, and, and I'm not saying this option's ours, but I think the board was pretty much when we took out that bond, was that we wanted to try to use this money to build because we don't want to pay for it for 20 years. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Sure. So we wanted to use this money to put up to the seven year mark that we could then make a large payment on that bond, bringing that debt down substantially and blowing the years because as shiny and as new as it is, Coach, in 19 years it's not going to be nearly as pretty. Sure. <laughs> and if we're still paying for it, it's going to feel bad. And that, that, from my understanding, was the 3%. Or was it? Yes, you're right. right. Because we this, didn't know about that. Because we're not, we're never guaranteed this current unit money. Sure. And the current unit money is what we're talking about right now. That 3% is only about 150000 and, and, and here's what I say to that. Whatever y'all want to do is fine. You know, I think that's what y'all talked about. We just have to find a way to budget for about, you know, enough money to pay for these devices because just like Dr. Lockwood said last year, it's more than about ball on Friday nights, and these devices are the one way that our kids learn today, um, the primary way to get them ready. And so that 250000 about 250000 we got to find a way to either budget for it locally, which means we would use look at all of our budgets and figure out where to cut, um, or we would earmark, you know, the the three percent or something else. I'm open to whatever. I just think that two hundred fifty thousand. My, my good understanding good. on that though is that that's not a one-time expense. It's a, that's an annual expense. Right. Yes. So I we mean, would we would look at our budget every year. So are year. we going to cut every year and scramble and try and fund this annual expense? I, I, that's that's just not sound management. No, you don't cut every year. You budget it in every year, just like you budget in for lights and toilet paper, and um, you know, they're, that's what most systems do. They keep, especially with the Chromebook purchases. I, I think what so, worries me is I just feel like we've overextended ourselves on pledged debt, and then we have things like this uh, Gym Four come up. I know our H HVAC stuff is going to hit us. It's unavoid unavoidable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the age of those units. We're going to have a major expense there. We got no way to pay for. And, and, and that's the board's, you know, decision because all I can do is recommend what I think that instructionally we need and um, I totally understand that. Well, but I, I also and I know instruction is important, but they got to have a place to be in school. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, we got to have safe buildings. we got to have cool buildings. We've got to have yeah, the I facilities totally that need. we need to teach these. So if we do use this 550 as a band-aid, I mean, the 225 and it's 550, yeah. isn't it, yeah. total yeah. from Alva? If we use it as a band aid, it's not 550. 450. It's 450. Well, 450 is is pretty much guaranteed. When I read, when I calculated, mm -hmm. 122 of those students that were growth was actually our students. Okay, so some of that's awesome. So to me, is, 165,000 yes. of it is ours, regardless. irregardless. Okay. Um, and then if we did a 70 30 split, if they are still on board with that, then that's an additional four hundred thousand for us. So that would actually be five sixty six. But now 
I don't know how I was going to feel whenever, if they thought that they were looking at a 70-30 split based on 1.5 million or not. Maybe, so that's why yeah, on my note I put yeah. 450 expected or as much as 560. Well, I guess you know, I can't. where I'm looking at it is we're okay today. We're not okay in nine months. Because we do have the 922, and we can pay for yeah, that. We can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. we can do that. We can do everything that y'all ask. The problem is, can we do it again? Yeah, that, and that's, that's where, where we're getting nervous. It comes into the three percent, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, where you know it was my understanding at the very beginning when we you know signed on with Alva that if we pulled our weight and we committed to this, then after this time period we would come back to the table and there'd be a good faith reconsideration and negotiation of you know but you know what of our role yeah that was just right word of mouth and i and i i'm getting the feel i don't know but but they're not getting a good feel even from you guys that negotiation is going to be a good thing with them they've been very easy to work i mean they really have karen has flown down They've really been good to work with. I mean, they have um, a vested interest in maintaining. Well, they do, but, they, but right. you got to understand that they are about the dollar bill. Too. And other so they're thing not going to just easily give up. What concerns me is with politics as it is, how much longer these big systems are going to let us get a big chunk of that growth? <laughs> this will be the only time. <laughs> yeah. Or because next thing you know, Hoover or Fairhope is going to come to these guys and go, we'll renegotiate with you. Come put your, put your logo on us. And that's why it's safe to use your budget that you have, you know, and that, that's what we've already looked at as we try to budget. Um, you know, you build that in, again, systems like ours that have beyond the 10 meals, you know, with 21 meals, it's important to build that in to what you need. And that's, when you start a one-to-one, -one, that's what you start with. You say, this is how much we've got to commit every year because it's just like anything you buy for your house that's an electronic, you can't just plan for three years because it's going to cost. Your lawnmower's going to tear up. Your refrigerator's going to tear up. And so these devices either had to be replaced. Or, so you really plan for, can I do this every year in my local budget if I had the other money or if I didn't? And that's what we have to do moving forward. For instance, my instructional budget was 155000 this year. Well, I would take you know 50 to 60 out of that. Our general operations may not have to be as much because our capital projects is up 300000 So that you just have to look at your budget and carve that out and plan for that out of your local funds if it's a priority for the system to provide those devices for the kids. Okay, so if that is a priority with our system, pushing the ball back over on you alls side of the court, can we do it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had a full year now, so I see, we see that mental health did not cost the whole 75000 that we budgeted for. It cost about half of that. Mm -hmm. So there's 35000 right there that we cut out. We budgeted a good bit for different types of professional development. Well, with our Title II, um, we'll be able to use some of that next year because we shaved back to figure out. Because here's the thing with Title II. With what Trump is doing, we don't know how much longer we are getting it. So we decided as a staff to cut out the two people that we're paying for it, we shifted those to somewhere else and still covered everything we have just fine. So that Title II money is 135000 that we'll use for PD. Well, that is coming right out, right now, the instruction. Plus, this summer, we budgeted for $47,000 for PD and stipends. and So that can now come out of Title II. So we've already started making those kinds of shifts. If we couldn't, I wouldn't bring it to you. Um, yes, we need this extra to get started, but that's just, that's one thing I did look for Dr. Cofield. You say, okay, if you need this, then where's it got to come out of this budget? But and if it's come out of general already, it can't come out of federal. It, but what I'm saying is like this particular thing, like the, if we need these Chromebooks, then where will we cut, you know, out of the budget? Well, what was the total cost of the salary schedule updates that we passed on the 6th? I haven't figured Can all of that yet. Can you get that figure yet? to Because that's a recurring... Annual cost. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can, but now it, it won't be tomorrow. And no, that'll I know that. take. I know that. Okay. <laughs> 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 you gonna look sad? No, but there's no way I can do that. But it was like 20 billet items. I mean, 
there was a lot of stuff. There, there, there was a lot of personnel. I just personnel. never got a feel for how much, because that's, that's something that will be here from now on unless we... There was quite a few personnel shifts, though. Mm -hmm. You saw the salary schedule updates and extensions, but I'm hoping with some of the shifts that we did with personnel and different things like that, that it's going to make up for that. But realistically, I have not even gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... Yeah, I, just, I didn't even I start at like, FY18 like in that <laughs> aspect, so I don't want to pretend that I have. Yeah, so. I just like to know and not wonder. So right. you're telling us if we can get a start on this technology this time, it will be in our regular general fund budget, then we won't be dealing with this. This is the well, safest way. But to I don't know what FY18. Now I'm just going to be transparent yeah. now because I don't know what FY18 looks like yet. But now tell me again. Uh, why we shouldn't do the one-time fair market value of five hundred eighty-eight thousand? Why? Why should we lease? I just, I just you can do it. both, but in my opinion, the three-year puts you on a recycling program to where the devices, when they fail, we're not trying to extend the overlap of them because right now we're bringing in devices that are fifteen years old or older, and that's what it, it puts us in that bind that we're always constantly have to go out and put out fires after a year three of everything that starts to fail so we'll have to just start purchasing so then you're going to have a mixture of devices that are five years old and two months old so that just puts everything off of a standard platform if you go with the lease at the end of the lease we box them up we ship them off and then we we just go into the next year with new ones and and from Todd, what Todd the way was, I understand it, I mean, that's basically what we've learned from the past is you don't buy it as an infrastructure, as a table or a desk, right. and expect it to you know last for 15 years right. because it's not. Uh, because you look at you know the computers from 10, 15 years ago and they're useless. And so, I mean, you have to have that freedom to be able to do that. Right. And you'll see in here that. There are 250 in either option A or B, but basically those are for the teacher devices. When we started inventorying the teacher devices, more than half are four to seven years old. They don't even work. I mean, we have several teachers and counselors. They're literally using their own that they bought from home because theirs doesn't work. And that's real. That's reality. There was no cycle that teacher devices were on either and so we have to get that cycle going so this keeps them in that rotation as well and that's a, that's why you also see 250 because they're in bad shape and that's just the reality of it um, and from what Todd was saying earlier that to me this was a little mis misleading and when he said it then I calculated it so the lease option he kept saying was less so if you multiply the 186, and correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't spoken with you about it, but times three, then you're paying 560000 over three years. So it looks like you're paying the 588, but you're paying less over three years than if you paid it one time 588. Basically you're saying we can own this three years, we're not going to be worth anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Because you look at the win-win lease. The, the win-win lease. If, if, control, you, if, if you, control, you can right. budget, if the, you, you know, you just have to know that you can I'm budget for it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. All right. So, tell me where you stand. How do you feel about it? I know you Don't do this to me. Um, <laughs> she will. This, yes. This is it. That's it. That's it. Um. I mean, to me, you were going to do the 187000 even if you kept the iPads every year anyway, but out of capital projects. Now, I'm not at hard fast like Dr. Davis is that you don't spend it out of, ca out of capital projects. We are looking at getting the 450 right now. There's some things instructionally we have to do. Um, I know it's all about the kids, so I want to say it's going to be okay. I haven't looked at the FY18 budget, so that's where my hesitancy comes from, just up front, and I tell it to Dr. Davis, you know, we, we joke about it, but we do have the conversation, so it does make me nervous because I haven't seen FY18 yet. So, um, but I say if, you, if we go forward 
I don't want to lock ourselves into two different things. I don't want to lock ourselves into that we can't spend it out of capital projects because I want us to look and see where it benefits us. And um, I lost where I was going there or something. We're not going to have a capital project. Well, we not, we won't, won't be <laughs> well that budget that I gave to you, Bailey and I talked about, there's some estimates in there too. There's some okay. unknowns, but okay. there's emergencies that come up, like what you're talking about with the gym floor and different things like that. The other thing was the 922000 I wouldn't want to say that we, we leave that to pay only the um, QZAB back. I say we look at it year to year moving forward. Yeah, we might have to use it. We might have to use it for the gym floor. We might have to use it for for different and I'm afraid the gym floor is going to be more than uh, six. We might not know that's a lot, but well, there's there's water there. coming up out of the ground. What is I, that? I and no that's idea. what concerns me. I said that to Bailey earlier. I mean, it, you keep having issues. I don't want us to spend five hundred thousand dollars on a gym floor in the same place and then deal with this again six years from now. Mm -hmm. I, where how do you, where are we on our reserve? We are at. Um, that sheet that I gave you earlier. Which one? Um, the, <laughs> the, page one. <laughs> the one that stapled together, flip okay. it over. Okay. Today, we are at 4.86 months. However, that has $750,000, and we know we've got to send some of that to Alva. Um, we started the year at 3.76 months, and we anticipate ending the year at 3.41 months. 3.1? I just put a little three point four months. Oh, okay. Yeah, really Our operating right here. Right here. Yeah. Okay, three point four months. Okay. As of the end of FY sixteen, our operating reserve was one point seven million okay. per month. You're saying that you mean that four point eight six is higher than yeah. I remember it ever being. Yeah. Could that be because so what we want the reserve it's four point eight six. That's where we're right. right. But that's got that six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. So that's yeah. taken into the share. Like, how much must we have that for sure? Mm -hmm. um, one month. One month, or you have to write a plan for how you're going to get it. We never want to get it. I don't, yeah. no, we don't want yeah, to get it. Well, yes. But that leads me to my next question. Dr. Davis, where do you feel comfortable at on our reserve? What's your comfort level? One month, two months, three months? I would not want to ever go below two and a half months. Two and a half um, months. But I, yeah, but I'm always erring on the side of the board. I mean, I've worked in very successful systems that never dropped below two months. I mean, they had two, they never had more than two months. I don't think we've ever dropped below three so, in just the seven years I've been here, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Every system has its own. We never had But if you're in three months, you're at $700,000. And I will tell you, I, I'm, I'm just telling you that if you had to go for the gym floor, the, you know, the only thing I'm worried about spending stuff out, allocating stuff to <coughs> capital projects, it has a definite what you can use it for and what yep. you can't. Exactly. So point. before I start Definitely. using my Alva money that I can put somewhere else, you know, capital projects should come out of capital projects. Right. Because otherwise, if I use my Alva money for capital projects, then I got something that's not something capital projects. I can't go over here and get it. Exactly. And I do, I know you can't ever trust what's coming out of the legislature, but there's a very big push from AETA, is AETA, I'm sorry, um, but they under, they have really pushed the legislature to understand that technology, if, if they don't start giving us more money for technology, then we're, Alabama's going to get further and further behind. <clears throat> They, now, they gave a little more this year for technology coordinator. It's seven or $8,000 a system. But they're seeing the need that if, if they don't continue <coughs> to give more, that systems that don't have any money are going to get further and further behind. So you'll see more and more money coming for technology, just like the <coughs> ETF money that's waiting to come. It's, it's earmarked for basically technology or if, peop, if a system can tell you that they've got all the devices they need and their infrastructure is okay, then they're allowed to use it for, you know, if they need to buy a bus or whatever. But, and that's 215 that will come our way. The guy sitting, the superintendent sitting beside me said he's waiting on getting his too for more devices. Um, that's what they're trying to, 
to support. So every bit that's left over in the ETF every year, they're going to be sending it our way for technology things first. So, so would it be better to spend, if we were to go for the, because we haven't talked about the speakers and the studio costs. We have to get to that. <laughs> That's it, yeah. We we got there yet. Yeah, those are one time cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would that be better to pay for the reserve? I don't know what you say. About the option of where to pay it from or if to, or whether to do it. it no, whether, where would that be, would it be option, option, option to pay it from there or not? If uh, we our decision is if to do it, yours, yours is where. Where, where would we pay it? I mean, I would look at I would look at that if I'm um, with you if we can pay it out of capital reserve first, though, because that we can use that now and save our reserve for the general reserve elsewhere. But I mean, I I can figure that as we go through the year. I can reclassify it or what have you, whichever place. I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up, Dr. Davis, or not, but I don't know whether there's money involved in this or not, but I want to throw it out there. Because I read in my paper last night that the State Board of Education uh, has decided to discontinue the ACT Aspire mm -hmm. and that we got to do something different. So is that going to mean that we got to, we're going to be up looking at money? Global Scholars for one year, and they purchased that. Um, we, are, I mean, we've used it before, it's, so it's not going to cost us a penny. It's just going to give us no data that matches last year's. I, I also would there. There's a lot going on right now that's amazing. Yeah, but right, but and so I don't want to know penny. where we're at right. financial. Where we're going to yeah. be? Yes, yeah. no, sir. Okay. I'm trying to. Let's see. Five sixty six. So. <laughs> in a new place because yeah. of that. <laughs> and I'll tell you, with the, the money that we're looking at from the students that we grew, which we grew 122, and that was 165, 244, that's ours and ours, and I think we'll see a little bit of growth again. Um, and I'm, they're plus... 306.52 plus 215. So we're looking at $781,306. We're looking at $781,000. Yes, sir. That's coming from the state legislature, which is 215. That's an overage of ETF, and then the 30%, and then the students we grew, that's 781,306.52. In October, then that three percent of five million from the overage of students from the ADM, that's about one hundred and fifty. So that's not that's not included in that seven eighty one. But we're looking at seven eighty one three oh six fifty two. Of course, you can't depending depend on, on that every year because sometimes they don't even give Depending on when the two fifteen comes in, if it came in this year, or if it came in FY eighteen, if it's FY eighteen. I would steer away from doing a one-time purchase of 588 because I'm not quite sure I could use that 215 to go back and pay back. But I could use it on future lease payments. So if you did 187 this year, 187 next year, and it didn't come in until next year, then it could be used towards that lease payment in the future. And if you, I don't know how this works. So if you use it for reserve and that money comes in FY18, you just put it back in reserve? Is that what happens? We usually cannot pay back like that. Okay. And I don't know how that one's written. I don't know how that um, works, so. But usually we can't. Gotcha. So I would just not bank on that. Gotcha. That's all I wanted to say. I guess I have a question for Todd in terms of uh, The place to eat in Eufaula is the Cajun Corner. The Cajun Corner, located at 114 North Eupala Avenue, is a place where you can let the good times roll and enjoy the taste of Louisiana. Try our signature New Orleans stuffed fish with your choice of red snapper, grouper, or tilapia. Taste the Creole flavor of our Mardi Gras stuffed shrimp or North Shore pasta. At the Cajun Corner, 114 North Eupala Avenue, we've got it all, from cocktails, appetizers, amazing salads, steaks, seafood, and pasta, to tempting desserts you just can't resist. Y'all come have a ball at the Cajun Corner and let us serve you like the kings and queens of Mardi Gras. If the board decide to, to, to go this route and make this investment, 
Where do you see us in terms of tech? Now, do you see having to come back to this board in the next few years for something different because technology has changed so much? Mm -hmm. The, the one thing that... <laughs> 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 I'm like Angie, I can't predict really anything, but the one thing about technology is the nature of it reduces the cost most often. So you saw when we started this at Piedmont, it cost us $800 a kid to buy a device. A little small 3A school, we took 10% out of every department's budget, used title funding, and that's how we did it. Uh, so you take an 800 price gap, and now the Chromebook is the most competitive, and it's basically taking a lot of the market share away from Apple at $170 a device. So in a matter of five years, we've seen, you know, and obviously you can't compare the quality and the longevity, but $800 versus $170, and academically you're getting the same thing from both tools because everything is cloud-based. So you're seeing that more school districts can afford to get in the game because what happens is you have a gap not only in learning, but that gap widens when technology is not applied at home. So you take your upper percent uh, school students have internet access at home. Well, the kids that don't, that gap widens and it just continues to widen. So you've got the e-learning gap versus the, the actual gap. So by able by uh, enabling school districts to spend $170 a kid, that gap can be, be closed. Uh, the other part is this perpetual licenses. Uh, we've, we've spent, and Angie and I have not really talked about how much in software licenses but we have invested already probably twice the amount you've been discussing in software because those are yearly licenses you have to renew. Uh, for instance, Canvas. Canvas was, a, you, you approved that earlier. That learning management system at the middle school, and Angie's a parent, and she's experienced it from that angle, was phenomenal. It went better than I would have ever imagined. And that's, that's because of the leadership there, the teachers there, but the thing is, if, if we don't go forward with it, then all of the money that we're investing in filling that gap instructionally is going to put us that much further behind. So in three years, will I come back? I don't think I will, but you know, we just have to play it by ear at that point. But if we can go ahead and say this is going to be built into the budget each year like you did the Apple agreement, I think we can sustain it. Because the one thing that's, that's not the three-year one and done will be the infrastructure. And so we're still waiting on E-rate funding. But once that E-rate funding comes in, we're going to have a $425,000 infrastructure in place. That's going to be one of the best in the state of Alabama, to, to be honest. But it's not going to cost that it's much. It's not going to cost But we'll have much. to pay 20%. We have a 20% cost. So for $60,000, we have almost a half a million dollar infrastructure that's top of the line. It's what the NFL stadiums use. It's what we put in the uh, athletic facility. And it starts there. So that's, that's what I won't come back from. Well, that, that, that's the, the backbone of everything. So if we can build this into a yearly budget item, uh, I think our students, uh, and, and they're ready for it. Uh, we, we had a lot of incidents talking about the testing uh, with a Chromebook. In a matter of 10 seconds, I can make 1,000 devices in test mode. And I did that from Huntsville this year, actually. I was in the middle of Alva testing, and middle school was testing, so I logged in, and just a few seconds, the kids here in Eufaula were in the test. Uh, we can do that with, with the new, anything the state tells us to do, we can manage it, and it's only $26 per kid just to manage that device. So if we use ALVA and the ETA, we're going to have to, and, and, and if we were to try to make all these things happen, including the, the studio stuff we haven't talked about, we're going to have to hit one of our reserves to the tune of 600000 whether it be the general fund, because you still got your lease at 330. I'm taking, I'm counting that. I mean, I know it would free up some money in the capital projects. It would free up 185000 over there that we'd already committed. But basically, we're looking at $1.2 million. Okay, for this year, I've already made one payment. I only okay, have 63000 left. So we're looking left. at 350000 Yeah, here. Coming out of the reserve. This, this is all of our payments. 
just so you'll have it for the next carbon meeting. You should not have this up. <laughs> I wanted you to know I paid it. Yeah. That's what I, I think we know it. Yeah. We we know. Know. <laughs> well, I didn't want him to count that hundred thousand in it. One eighty-two. We're gonna have to slow up a little bit, guys. Yeah. I mean, I, I, as a board member, I want us to do what's best for everybody and, and be physically strong, but we're gonna have to slow down some. And, and remember when we came to you with our, you know, with our $650,000 in the red budget, um, y'all were very, very behind. And I say y'all because I wasn't here then. Um, your facilities were in bad shape. Our instruction was in bad shape. They didn't have the resources they need or the, the PD that they needed. So you can't fix it in a day. No, and, but that's where that money has come from. That's why we have invested so much um, because we had to catch up with our facilities and with our instructional tools for in the classroom. Um, it, it, it won't be that way every year. It's the same thing happened in Pelham. That first year and a half, it was very, very expensive. And then it's back to a normal pace because we had to get all of the training in. And most training series are two years. And then you also get grants, like with the AP grants. See, last summer we, we spent a good bit. We had to pay for every person that went to pre-AP or AP training. That's $600 a head. Well, with that grant for the next three years that started this summer, all of that's covered. So it, it was, yes. Um, but it will. they're getting the stuff that they need and the, the classroom resources that they need. We move on to coach over there. Y'all move on to the studio. Studio. Don't get too far though, Angie. You and uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just the side of it. These were uh, two different, two different <laughs> things. You have the quote for all of the studio equipment, which was right at one. One, you see 160, 962 on the back. Uh, he, the Howard EDU is that company. The Pixel Lot system is 10, five. 10 five. 5. And so the Howard EDU company, we told them that we, you know, we budgeted for between 150 and 160. So, of course, they sent us this, and this is all the stuff we're getting, and it's all the stuff he showed you last month, but he's working with us. To get it down to about 150 so that the 10.5 would be for our, the pixel lot system which that's what broadcasts everything that's on the football field or the gym yes, and can we, i explained to him when i spoke with him yes we spoke me and todd spoke to him last friday i said hey we you know we got this quote for 160 we're really you know we, we'd obviously like to make it as cheap as we can and we're going to because they they were doing a separate quote for a remote studio but the pixel lot system meets that need for a much cheaper and he said he, he had heard of it said that's great if you're going to do that I highly recommend it um that's top notch the best bang for your buck you can get and it and it meets all all these needs and i said well we you know is there is there any cuts here and and he said through the installation cost and then some of the furniture that are in a quote the the size of the cabinets uh, as, as random as it sounds, he said they make the, they're going to be smaller because we're not going to have as much equipment as he thought. And he said getting getting the Howard EDU down to 150, allowing for the 105 to be on top of that. So I, I would think, I mean, I'd say under 165 total to be safe. But he, he acted like that was no big deal. It, he's really excited to work with us too and, and shave the installation costs because he said he wants to be a flagship for them and, and what we're doing. Obviously, the latest technology and. Um, Using that as an example. There's and, little confusion. That, that stands out to me, and, and, and I'm impressed by Coach's, Coach Holmes' uh, uh, passion and commitment to this because it's only going to be as good as the, the individual who takes no this pressure and drives <laughs> the <front>. <laughs> <laughs> No pressure. Appreciate it. Because otherwise, you know, we're, we're buying an expensive car that's right. in the driveway. And I, and I told Mr. Calton, I know, I know more about this than I knew about career prep when I started teaching career prep when I came here. I'm a, I'm a history major. That's what my degree's in. But 
I was assigned to Mr. Rip Rep, and I guess you can ask Mr. Hawkins about how he thinks about that performance, but I feel more prepared right now doing this because, uh, matter of fact, me and uh, Tracy Tidwell up at Oak the teacher there, were talking today about curriculum and textbooks and um, kind of trying to fill him out that he's getting new textbooks too, and so we were talking together as we were riding up there today working on that, and so I think it's going to be with, with Howard EDU, part of that, if you see on the second page of that quote, is, is professional development in the equipment we're getting, not just general hey, this is how you do this. They're going to install it, we're going to sit down, we're going to go through the actual equipment that we have because obviously it's different depending on what you have. And the same thing with the Pixelot. That's included, the Pixelot system is $9,000 for the two cameras and a $1,500 install fee that covers the installation, the computers to run the cameras, and then the PD to go along with that, uh, how, how to run it. Um, so, so you're saying the 52 thousand six hundred is in addition to the yep. the fifty two thousand. That's all. Yeah. That's the that's no, that's that's the um, audio system. That's not under my one. That fifty two thousand is yeah. That's for two speakers. We're we're not doing that. Okay. That's a venue. Scroll up to. I know, but oh, I'm so sorry. So this is not. This is in addition to that, or is that my? That's a different one. Yes, sir. But we are on the one sixty, but I, somehow another shot down there and started at fifty two, and that's what I'm trying to understand better. That's that's an addition to the one sixty. I'm not asking this to not this. I'm just, just asking this for clarity. Uh, where in the school is the new media? Where where are we, where is it going to be located? Uh, um, Miss Finn's old office at the high school, the glass then, as you're walking through, start down the academic hallway on the left, okay. uh, the, the glass wall, which is cool. It's going to be set up, so if you come, it's going to be set up like the Today Show kind of. If you came and stood outside the glass, you're going to be seeing it filmed, which is neat for people taking tours or when, we're, when people are coming to look at the studio. Uh, as the teacher, I'm glad they can come look at it without being in there and touching it. Right? I mean, obviously, you spend 160 that also backs up to his classroom too. It does, yes. Okay. Okay. And they came, when we met with them, they, they laid it out. Like they came, uh, measured the space, we laid it out. I mean, it's, it's the, the perfect size. We are putting a door in the wall. Is that still the plan, Mr. Hawkins, correct? There's gonna be a door, we're installing a door in between my classroom and there because two of the stations that can't be in the studio will actually be in my classroom because they can't be inside, uh, because obviously you're producing, they're talking about fade count, you don't want that to be picked up by the microphone, so it needs to be in a separate room. And so those two stations will actually be in my classroom. Do you want to ask about that one? Okay, that is the coach called the E-Venue. That's what we used at graduation. Now the quote you have had, if you'll see it has the 12995 says Tempo Master Control. That's what the athletic boosters have agreed to pick up because that <coughs> runs different segments of different things, basically athletically. It can run different things, but then the, it says EPOD All Weather Mobile um, Audio System. You see the unit price at 12995 with two. Um, we're only purchasing one. Uh, eventually, you know, if we want to purchase two or have the funding, um, but one is what we actually used the day that they demoed it. Now, for graduation, we used two, um, but you normally have it set far off. But that's why it says, you know, the 52-2. But you'll see on the board agenda report, it's 30-some. 30, 30 it's 19995 because there's just, you know, one is what we're looking at, not two of the speakers. Um, and then you'll see the support, but you'll see the support is 2500 but the discount is 2990 So that's really canceling that out, plus $100 more going towards that. But the booster, the athletic boosters have already agreed to pick up that 13000 So we're, we're only paying for the speaker and the roller part, which we'll use for field day, Special Olympics, graduation, all kinds of things across the system. We can roll it over here for literacy day. Um, it's, it's real easy and transferable. 
But yes, that's why it says 52. Mr. Hawkins tried to, to sneak an extra speaker in on us. I, I emailed Coach Moore. I said, where did that two come from? We never talked about two. He said, Coach Hawkins would like a second one. I mean, Mr. Hawkins, but I said, okay. For, for graduation, if, if it's going to be viable for graduation, I think eventually we have to add that. Sure. And maybe we can later. And we, and that's what, we pointed them at both sides, too. That was the point in it. And yeah. It sounded great. Probably the best I've heard. Now, I will tell you there was a little confusion. The first quote they sent us at one point said 240000 for the Howard EDU, and I said, oh, my goodness. But That was the remote studio. Yes, but the Pixelot system for 10.9 takes care of all of that. So, Basically, the capability, so you understand, we'll be able to live stream anything from the football field, any event, whether it's a graduation football game, anything that takes place there will be live streamed. Anything that takes place in the gym. I'm going to show off that pretty new floor. Uh, get as much air time as we can. Anything in the gym will be live stream. And then anything else that we do, we'll have to go back to the studio. And, and if there's a, technically we could live stream it, but the production quality would be like you were filming it and just putting it like anybody was. If we want to produce with graphics and that kind of thing, we take it back to the studio, work with it there before we put it out. Coach, so, yes, sir. when this program is up and running, how many students do we expect to have in this academy? Uh, a hundred, 120, full of three year implementation, 120 by then, um, expect it, I mean the response, and Mr. Hawkins will speak to this, he's been working on schedule, Miss full, the first year is we, we budgeted <coughs> two, so kids that have currently been in Tiger News uh, are going into the second level class, and there, there's two of those, and those are full, and then the introductory class of 30, 30 freshmen, 8th graders coming up, and I think they turned kids away, we had more sign up, so, um, I think it's going to, uh, I mean, the kids like it. It's like I tell Mr. Calvin, uh, it, it's another way to build a relationship. You know, to, to, it, people talk about coaches, we can get kids to do more than, it's because we have relationships with them. Well, the same way I think that's one of the benefits of other academies is you give kids something to do besides, you give them a reason to look forward to coming to school. And so I think, I think this provides that uh, for a group of kids that we're not reaching right now. Because we don't have that aspect in our school, and um, but it will be 120, and then Mr. Hawkins even talked about eventually we may have to grow past that. So I pick up some more. You know, we'll deal with that. That's a good problem to have in three years. And actually, with the network, I don't know the name of it, but Coach Savary spoke to the superintendents about joining it and about Mr. Beasley. Did you look at your notes? I did, and Thank uh, you. He, he's very supportive of this, said we don't get on board now, we're going to be way left behind. Um, that's kind of paraphrasing. Well, who, I just who I'm sorry, Coach yeah. Savarese is in charge of the Alabama High School Athletic Association. So they have a, to superintendents. The NFHS network has an exclusive deal with the HSAA. If you're going to broadcast a playoff, like they can't, they can't control what we do for our regular games, but obviously with state playoffs they can. And so any playoff broadcast, you don't have a choice. If you're an AHSAA member school, you have to use the NFHS network. It has to run through them. So if you, if we were to, in the first round playoff game, if we were to sit up and, and broadcast it on our own through through some other means, we can't do that. But that's, we can. That's in violation of AHSAA policy because they have a deal. I'm sure yeah. there's some money there. Right? Uh, there's a relationship there. And so you have to for playoffs. And so most schools are just going to... Yeah. And saying, well, if we're going to have to do it for playoffs, let's be on the whole time. Because there is a subscription service, and obviously if you're putting all your games up there and people are signing up for the subscription, you're going to make some money back. Uh, nothing. Uh, he talked that in two or three years that it's going to be a revenue maker. Mm -hmm. He said it's really starting to spread. He did and, say that at SSA. And they're also <laughs> providing us the, the other thing about that relationship is it provides us unlimited storage. Um, one of the things with Howard EDU we were talking about is how are we going to store all our newscasts, all our video, and they, they suggested some paid subscription service, but NFHS Network says, no, we do, we do sporting events, but we do non-sporting events that are free. People can log on and watch all the non-sporting events they want to on your page. Does it cost them a dime? And I said, well, how, much, how many can we put on there? He said, as many as you want to. He said they'll stay on there forever. Like you can search the archives, what year, what you're looking for, and uh, pulled up some examples of 
some some high school newscast using that. That's where they put their newscast, which is good because it drives it drives everybody to one website for information about the high school or the system. And on, on our website, we can point link it, yeah, uh, right to that. So you know, for the Tiger News or whatever else we do, so that's a, that's a win. That when it's free service based. <laughs> he said it's done. Here's on free. <laughs> the partnership, yeah, it's 100% free. 100%. Okay, we back to the power of the engine. <laughs> I'm giving you the numbers, so <laughs> um, that's where we are. Where we are. Mm. All right. So, just a total recap, please, Angie. So we we looking at upfront. We're looking at annually three hundred and forty, a little over three hundred forty-two thousand dollars off the top. Am I correct? Correct. Bond okay. issue payments. If we, if we go with this, man. we're looking at, that's off the top, mm -hmm. annually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're talking bond and QSAP. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're looking at, uh, I know you said we get the uh, million, but that's just a one time on the, uh, <coughs> yeah, that's for just 2018. The million dollars that capital, capital, capital project. Oh yes. So that I mean, but that just I understand that's just for two eighteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would estimate eight hundred. Okay, we, and that's a more reliable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we really need to, to work towards not paying for our lease agreements out of that capital projects fund. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That you're comfortable with a three month reserve? Three months, not lower. Not I mean, lower. I prefer I mean, three and a half. That's great comfort level. Um, you won't wake up sleepless, will you, in three months? If it dropped below, yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean know, absolutely. We all have to obviously consider we haven't been in probation in five years, mm -hmm. so it's coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, just statistically, it's got to be coming. Yeah. We have an administration up there that is. Shaky. Shaky, uh, and, and when you come to Medicaid cuts, that's going to affect us, correct? Mm -hmm. It's going to affect yes. our mm -hmm. nurses. It's going to affect our mental health and everything. and everything. So there's a lot of unknowns on our end, too, and everybody's. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Probably need to bump that about 3.2. Yeah. Probably. Probably. And, and 3.2. And not, and not go below that. Yeah, I mean, give us the cushion, but don't go all the way to the floor. Mm -hmm. The floor is one. No. <laughs> <laughs> the floor would be zero. That is the law. By law. <laughs> we're not doing our job if we're there. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to see the plan you have to write if you get into one. It would be ugly. Okay. Okay. Very ugly. Are there any more questions from the board? Any more concerns? We do thank you. Thank you. Ufala Fitness offering complete gym amenities. Melissa Sanders, owner and boot camp instructor. High impact designed to build strength with intense group intervals. Angie and Jamie Stevens, former state champions in the NPC. Highly skilled trainers offering innovation and instruction to achieve your personal fitness goal. Anthony Griggs, instruction in the MMA and self-defense classes. A former MMA champion, bodyguard, and licensed executive protection specialist. You follow fitness on Broad Street next to the post office. It is 714. And we will start our study of the meeting. Everybody should have an agenda in front of you. Can we get a group of the agenda, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, everybody should have had an opportunity to read over the minutes. Any corrections? Comments? Move that be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Facility update.
Superintendent. Superintendent. Okay. Um, the three A. We have a, a brief overview from Spectra Care. Mr. Bose is here um, to share with us kind of an overview of the year. And this was the the mental health component that we added this year. Hello. Yeah, there. <laughs> so I'm Terry Dubose. I'm the director of children's services for Spectra Care. And as you all know. Uh, this past school year was our first year in offering school-based mental health services to all students, uh, grades kindergarten through 12. Shalina Green is our master's level full-time therapist, so she was 100% um, dedicated in terms of her time to serving the four schools. So I just kind of put together some numbers so you could see what the first year looked like. All total, we started October 1st, so from October 1st till the end of the school year, we received 126 referrals for services uh, for children. Um, I, we broke that down over the month. Obviously, our busiest month was October because it was that inaugural month. Um, as soon as we rolled out the program, there were teachers, administrators, parents, and students themselves who requested services. So we did receive 48 referrals uh, that first month. Um, and then through the year, uh, we went from you know, 18 one month. Um, our lowest month for referrals was we had eight in May, which we anticipated. That was a shorter month. Um, you know, we were wrapping up the school year. So most of the children were seen um, at least two times a month, but Shalina saw a lot of them weekly, and she would see them in the school. So that allowed her to communicate not just with the student, but she was meeting with teachers, administrators, guidance counselors, you know, sharing the information um, with the parents as well. Um, we, uh, over uh, the course of the year, we see, received 33 referrals from the primary school, 28 from the elementary school, 41 from the middle school, and 24 for the high school. So we have school-based mental health with two other systems, and those first-year numbers are very much in line with what we had with those systems. And what we see is they just continue to grow. Uh, people become more aware of what we're doing. Uh, parents talk to each other about the services. So we, we do see that they can, those numbers continue to climb. Of the 126 referrals, we had 82 that are still today receiving services. Um, what Shalene has been doing over the summer is whatever she has to do to access those children. So we're seeing children now at the Boys and Girls Club. We're seeing them in our offices. She's been to homes uh, to follow up with some of those children. Um, certainly the priority ones that we don't want to lose contact with over the summer. She's doing groups with the children. Um, we are reaching out tomorrow to the Housing Authority to see how we can get in there and, and contact and stay in touch with our kids through the summer. Because what we know, just like everything else, if we don't use the skills, we lose them. So we are continuing uh, to, to see all the kids as often as we can through the summer. So it's been a really successful year. We've been very excited about the numbers, about the responses. Um, the communication between us and the schools have been Fantastic. So, what about with the parents? Have they been pretty receptive to the services? I think in general they have. When someone has refused services, typically it's because they're already seeing a therapist somewhere else, and so they did, we can't have duplication of services. There have been a few uh, that we just have not been able to reach out and get in contact with. But what's been happening is the school's been doing a great job of re-referring them a month month and a half down the road, and then we try again. Um, we, tr we try at least three times to make contact with the parents. But I think overall, um, I think why, how we're seeing the numbers not dropping off through the summer is there's been such good communication through the year that when she calls, they answer the phone. <laughs> Which is, you know, that's that takes mm -hmm. some work. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all you do. All right. um, and before we go to 6B, I do want to take a chance, uh, just a minute, to recognize because Mr. Warren was instrumental in getting this started. This was one of the things I was passionate about, and he did all the legwork. Um, 
Unfortunately, the board approved his uh, his uh, rec the recommendation the other night in Muskogee County. So we unfortunately are losing him, but so we have a small token of our appreciation. But it, with this, he was instrumental in this whole thing, along with other things. But yeah. So Mr. Warren, if you'll come up and get this, <laughs> we're not very happy, but we are <laughs> happy for you. Thank you. So thank you. Mm -hmm. He's already had his first school improvement meeting that lasted from 9 to 3. So. <laughs> and then 3B, Mr. Bailey, you want to come on up? Hey, good evening. How are y'all? Um, first thing, AMMS restroom renovations, we're about 27% complete on that. We're starting to paint things. We're going a lot quicker now, you know, that we've got the demo. The main portions, you know, have been done, rerouting for the new ADA compliance for the plumbing lines and all that, so we should start seeing an increase in the work, I hope so, because we've only got about six weeks <laughs> on, that, on that project. But every, everything is going good there. Um, Anderson Construction, Sewell and Key, they're, they're all doing a great job. On our other summer projects, we are about 65% complete on painting the primary school. That job should be scheduled to be finished the end of next week. I'm counting for a couple of days during the holiday, during the 4th, so it may go a couple of days into the next week, but they should be finished at that school. We are finished painting at the elementary school on the interior, and we did add the media center and some office areas because of shifting some personnel around. One room they had ended up using for a storage room, and you know we just we just wanted to go ahead and you know spruce it up because now it was going to be used for an office. So we did add a few things there. Our work orders we had completed 120 work orders for the month of May, or 120 input. We actually completed 112 during that same time period. Some of those were we could not do until after school got out, and that's the reason there's a eight number difference in there. The drainage at EES, I am meeting with the civil engineer tomorrow. They've conducted all the surveys. I do not know what the findings are. I know what our plan is, you know, and to fix it. But we're preparing that project to go out to bid, and it should go out to bid in the next few weeks. But that will be an ongoing project. It will be going on during school because I do not think there is any way that we can have it completed with the amount of time we have to leave it out for bid before school starts. And that's the side road plus all that where it drains into the basement. Yeah. We'll in the, in the back where it comes this. off the hill from the stadium and the existing gym, it just it just runs all down to the school. If the bay actually if the basement was not there, mm -hmm. it, it would go all into the you know all right up next to the school. So. Are you able to get anything from the city as far as all paving or anything? Have not gone back. I think the best approach on that is. To We've got to fix it anyway. We yeah. fix it. We see what comes out of the civil engineering report and what they saw caused part of the problem. So we would have additional information mm -hmm. and proof to say, you know, this was caused by, by something else. Mm -hmm. But until we get all those findings back, I, I just personally don't, don't really have enough information to go, go to them. looked at it two different times. I do have a company in Atlanta that is coming down to look at it on Thursday. Um, they were recommended by Anderson Construction. You know, they're specialists in water infiltration slash, you know, mediation, getting rid of the water and everything else. Because number one, we don't know where it's coming from. We do know that it's coming, you know, from the ground because if it were a leak, which would be good because insurance would cover it, it would not dry like it's drying. Um, I went there on a Friday before I went on vacation. Everything was dry. We didn't have we hadn't had a lot of rain when I got back from vacation. I went on a Thursday after we'd had all the rain, and you could rub your hand in the spots that we had cut, and there was there was moisture there. But prior to that, it had dried. So if it, if it were a leak coming from a pipe or something like that, it would be there continually and consistent. But but it's not. We've already had the insurance company come down. We've already filed a claim. We're on record, so if something does come up, you know, we're good on that point. But, you know, the biggest thing is there's two ways we can fix it. We can try to drain around the, the gym, or we have to go straight through the floor. 
straight through the floor is probably going to be the biggest price because everything has to be torn up. I do know that replacing the gym floor with the wood maple on a gym that size is going to be about $100,000. I mean, that's, that's just the expense of the floor. So when we consider the drainage, you know, the labor, redoing everything that we have to do, those those are the estimates that we have. So we can identify where the water is coming from? I, I am optimistic that the company in Atlantic, since they both both engineers are going to give me prices and proposals and we have to go from there. But that's what they specialize in. It could be coming straight. No one really, I, I have no clue. It could be a spring. It could be coming from running off a field in the back. It could be, I mean, we all know the drainage issues that are there. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, you know, not going to blame anybody how the school was built, anything else. It's a problem. we got to fix it. So that's, that's all we can do. There's no sense in trying to, you know, we want to know where the water's coming from and get it fixed. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Relief has a new address in Eupaula. Main Street Family Urgent Care is now open on South Eupaula Avenue just across from Winn-Dixie. From cuts to broken bones, strep, throat, and flu, they can help you heal and feel better fast. Open seven days a week, Main Street Family Urgent Care provides high-quality medical care for the entire family. Right here, right now. Keeping you close to home and getting you back to healthy fast. Main Street Family Urgent Care. That's, we have to do that first before we even consider doing anything to the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions? Questions? We don't have any idea of timeline on that. The only <coughs> saving grace that we have is there are provisions in the laws that we can declare an emergency. We don't have to bid anything out. We can go straight from selecting an architect to selecting uh, contractor without going through any of that bid process and we can cut off and shave off about 30 45 days but like we, with the fire alarm because it was an emergency right so we, i mean we there, there there are certain provisions we've never used one have to go through the commission. yes sir, we will have to go through everything's going to have would have to be coded it's a building that students are in so we do have to go the price alone is going to make us go through the building commission and i'm optimistic but you know I don't know. I mean, we could get in there, and you know, our five hundred thousand dollar estimate could be seven hundred. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, we don't talk like that. But I'm just saying, don't worry. We don't. don't we don't. Worry, that's what he says. That's what I said. Don't I mean, worry. I'll worry about it yet until I figure, till we figure out what's causing the problem. <laughs> then, then we, you know, we worry if we have to worry, but we have to fix what we have to fix. We have to have no. We got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Fix it first. Yeah. Okay. We got to cut it first. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say this, and you know, Coach Moore didn't find it funny. But you know, I told Coach Moore that they had identified the problem. It was that new athletic facility. We were going to have to tear it down to fix the problem. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. I know he didn't. Thank you much. You're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, Miss Ellis. Well, you have the May financial report. Um, we've talked about the June one today. I'm not really not going to say much more on this one other than the bank statements were reconciled and um, <laughs> revenues are are where they should be. And she's very proud of me because I'm starting to, to turn things away and say no. Okay. She has said no. Oh, really? She's taught me well. So. <laughs> New business, 5A, we have our audit report. Mr. Hartzog, thank you for being very patient with us. And oh, no problem. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, you should have received a copy of the report in your package. Uh, my responsibility is report on the financial statement to independent auditor's report. Uh, the board received an unmodified opinion on the basic financial statements, uh, which says the financial statements present fairly the financial position and change in financial position for the year. I'd like to bring your attention to management's discussion and analysis. This is prepared internally by the board staff. Angie does a great job with this report. It's, it's a summary of the whole package, so I would encourage everyone to read the management discussion and analysis. 
My other two reports that I'm required to uh, report on on the government auditing standards is the report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance and other matters. Um, I identified no deficiencies in internal control over financial reporting that are considered material weaknesses and disclose no instances of non-compliance or other matters that are required to be reported under government auditing standards. Then I had to do a separate report. Uh, <coughs> federal government requires under the uniform guidance is the independent auditors, auditors report on compliance for each major program and on the internal control over compliance. Uh, in my opinion, the board complied with the compliance requirements I also identified no deficiencies in the internal control of compliance I consider to be material. Schedule of findings and question calls summarizes the results of the audit related to the report on the financial statements and the reports related to federal awards. Section 2 of that report indicates that no findings were reported related to the financial statements or federal awards. So you got a really good clean report. Uh, your staff does a fabulous job. I, I compliment all the department heads, the principals at the local schools and their bookkeepers. They, they all do a wonderful job. Um, I will be furnishing each board member a, a separate letter outlining significant findings and other matters as required by our professional standards. Uh, but I'll get that to you by email uh, within just a few days. And I'll also have a final report uh, there's really no significant change from the draft. I, I did a, a little bit of cleanup, um, but unless you look real hard, you wouldn't see it. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the board and management for uh, allowing me to provide this service to the board. And, uh, again, want to compliment you on doing such a fine job. If anyone has had a chance to really get into the report and review it, if you have any questions, I can field them now, or you can call me on the telephone, text me, email me, uh, call me, whatever. So, any questions at this time? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bro. Thank you very Thank much. You. B, you have the uh, revision of the salary schedule. There are two two things. One is a uh, an addition that you saw on there with the athletic director supplement, and then the second one is the additional supplement for speech teachers um, based on the the high area, the high need area. So, so those are the two additions here to last month's salary schedule. Superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5B. I get a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 5C is a, a recommendation for signing bonuses for hard to fill areas, math, science, and special ed. And based on our struggle, everyone else's struggle, and uh, we're, we're recommending this. And it would be in a after the third year we talked about it's a $7,500 signing bonus and so we, we looked at either $2,500 each year or the $7,500 at the end of the third year um, to stay with us for a minimum of three years in that position so any questions we need to change that language inside that um, I rec I, w I can recommend that the, the 7500 be um, given at the end of the third completion of the third year because that's actually when they're receiving their tenure. Sure. Tenure consideration. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Any? Superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5C. So moved. Second. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ms. Webb, did you get that? Okay, good. 5D is the Envision U one-to-one -one district implementation. Um, there are options A and B, of course, and then the additional purchase. So the recommendation is to approve <coughs> the purchase um, at either option. I think A is the one we came up with, the, the lease value, and then the additional purchase. It's a one-time purchase at the end. Oh, I'm sorry. The superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5D. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Folders? 5E is the broadcast studio purchase with the, the broadcast equipment and the pixel lot. Superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5E. Second. All in favor? Aye. Folders? Five uh, F is the E venue. That's the audio system with one speaker, which is how it's pointed out in the board agenda report. Um, um, superintendent recommends that the board approve item five F. So moved. All in favor? We have 5G. We should have 5G renewer. Yeah. On the copier. Paper copy. Okay. Yes. On the paper copy. Okay. 5G is the renewal of the copier lease that was sent yesterday, and that was my fault because it's a, it's an extension of what we currently have for one more year, and so there was just confusion as to whether it had to. But it's the same exact lease for one more year. We are going to track. We do not see near as much paper being needed to run between the consumables we're purchasing and also with the devices. We saw a huge cut at AMMS alone. So we're going. We will. We are recommended extending it just like it is for one more year, and and then figure out where we need to go with copier leases. So, and that's again my fault for coming yesterday. I'm sorry. Superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5G. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. 5H, there is a plethora of activities for you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, these consist mainly of our high school this, this time. You'll be seeing our elementary and primary and middle roll in, trying to again get most of the fall activities in one. <clears throat> okay. The superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5H. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And then before you, 5I, you have uh, the personnel 5I1 through 5I39. <coughs> Superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5I. For Southern cooking at its best, it's Michelle's of Georgetown, located on Highway 82 East just across the bridge in beautiful downtown Georgetown. Michelle's has a daily buffet from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and, wait, it's the weekend. On Saturday and Sunday, they have a delicious breakfast buffet from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and at 5.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, it's one of the largest and freshest seafood buffets that you can find. So for Southern cooking at its best or the freshest seafood buffet around, it's Michelle's of Georgetown, 777 Highway 82 East in Georgetown, Georgia. All times are Eastern. Welcome to Old Mexico. 
Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solario.